years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Friday, the uh, 27th of October, I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I had the uh, flu shot on Wednesday and I uh, felt great yesterday. I played tennis, did very nicely. And then last night, just suddenly started to shiver and I wasn't feeling so great, but I got everything out and I'm here. I like to uh, show up. <laughs> Dow's down 50 at 32,738 uh, 32, on this Friday, the 27th of October, wrapping up the month, very close to that. The S&P, I want to show you a bunch of things here. The S&P is, is up 11 at 4148. It was up much more, but it's holding pretty nicely. I suspect it's got a little bit of Amazon in it, so uh, that's helping. Looking at the QQQ and the NDX 100 trading vehicle, it went under the 200 period moving average. Now it's over the daily chart, but the weekly chart did go, and we've got to wait for Friday. We've got to wait for this four o'clock close because that pink nine period moving average in the weekly chart. Remember, I call this the um, instrument, or at least the technical instrument of last resort because it really takes a while. But then when it finally turns, you have to monitor it real closely because if it stays that way, you can stay that way for quite a while. But in the meantime, Bank of the Ranch had held key support. In the weekly chart, the nine, uh, as I say, is, uh, just as we speak, has gone pink. The MACD's weak, stochastics at 26%. That's weak. On balance volumes pull back from the high. So this is just this saying, this is what I said to subscribers. Um, you remember last Friday, what I was saying is, if we get a really ugly Friday, and then Sunday night, instead of being uh, trying to rally, there is the... There's a sharp move to the downside, and that's followed through really badly on Monday. Then we could make a really good tradable low. But you'd also have to see the VIX index really get into the 20s. None of that happened, so that stalled it. Today's the same thing. If today the Dow by the end of the day is down uh, 285 points or more, <coughs> the S&P has gone from plus 8 right now to maybe minus 38. Um, and the VIX index closes the week. Uh, it's down. Uh, it's down 70 cents in 1998. It did make a peak, Dean, but do you remember in the Chapman Wave methodology? This is the only instrument we look at that doesn't, I do, it doesn't have the Chapman Wave notation apply. Uh, but what's really important is I suspect, and now this is just goes back with the, the decades that I've been doing this and the number of times I've been waiting for the real spiral to the upside in the volatility index to give us a really good low, which is what we've picked up many times before. But most importantly, this VIX at 20 is still just way too mild. So I'm suspecting that when we get any really, uh, and I call it a tradable low, it could be the low, it could be a low, but I mean, I really, I'm talking about a couple of weeks of upside move. The VIX will probably have to go 23, 26, 28, and then maybe even touch 32. And then I think we're ready for some really good good trading. So until that happens, we've been very careful. We've raised a lot of cash. We've got some positions. And um, we'll see what happens here. And uh, we're still short from the exact high on August 1st from the Dow high. That was um, a nice reversal. Uh, maybe I'll just show this to you right now. There we go, INDU. At 35,679, that day we went short, right? The opening, uh, opening of the session, and we remain short. And we've had other trading positions, but key is that we remain short. And with this arch formation, look at the beautiful arch formation. It's, it's a beautiful symmetry. Look at this. From this low right here to the high, from this low of 32,846, I think it was October the 4th or so, to the high that was made on, on uh, in the last high that was made around about the 16th, 17th, you've got the number of bars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What do we do? We come down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it was one bar early, actually. <clears throat> one bar early. Not bad, huh? 
and I didn't. I did it in my other charts. I didn't do it here, but I should have put in the inside wedge target support line. All right, we've taken that out. That means that within two sessions, because it's a daily chart, we need to see a close. And you can go three sessions above 32,846. If it does that, it says, whoo, save the day. If it doesn't do that, it says, uh-oh, be ready for further declines. If it saves the day, it says you've got a balance, you can make a little H, and the H goes to a lowercase m pattern. So I'm all about these patterns. I'm talking about them all the time. And, yeah, we've got the arch formation. This is the low that we were looking at right here. This is the Dow, the low that was made the week of the 26th of May at 33,090, at 32,586. The low today is... We haven't taken that out yet. 32,667, 100 points higher. We're very close, but we've done the arch formation. Remember, we're always talking about arches and cups and straight lines. All right, so now I don't want to take too much time because what I am saying is my suspicion is that until we get the kind of sell-off, it says, and when you just, you're, yeah, they talk about, it's not a great expression, but they always talk about you, you, you want to throw up, you feel so depressed and so, you just say, oh, I mean, is there nothing here that holds? There's nothing sacred anymore because they not hold the left side support. When you want to just give everything up, that's when the volatility index screams higher. And that's the, that's the time period that you can start to see some kind of a really decent tradable low. All right, with that said, let me just run this really quickly. Um, SPX, there we go. The, the S&P has gone to a leg C in the weekly chart with the nine period moving average. And that just says, let's be careful because the whole area of 4,100, that's where there was a lot of, between 4,100 and 40, let's even call it 4,150. That There was a lot of action there. And that should be some kind of support from April. Monthly chart was doing so well. It was getting so close to the 48.18 high that was made back in January. It was January, wasn't it? Yeah, January of 2022. And we went all the way up to the most recent high of 4,600. And now we're pulling back. It's a pity. Everything was looking so good that <laughs> on a monthly chart. But now the monthly chart has gone underneath the year 14 period moving average. But the nine is still positive. And that's the most important thing. Let me just do this real quickly. QQQ. Uh, the Qs are up 371 at 347. A couple of uh, tech stocks are really helping. And that's important. So now we're above the 200 period moving average. But I'm watching this lower lows and lower highs. Just make it as simple as possible. When that changes, I'll change. In the meantime, we could go into a rectangle formation, but it is, it's, it's kind of stalling, right? IWM, same thing. IWM is the Russell 2000. Just looks horrible. This big rectangle that we were looking at that goes back. Let me show you this weekly chart. Look at this rectangle that goes back to June of 2022 to a high in the 199 area, 200 area, and it's just been trapped. Now it's going very decisively to the lower part of the trend line of 162, which is hit 162.78 in June 2022. Uh, 162.50 back in, I think it was October of last year. Here we are one more time. Maybe I'll do a left side, right side price time match to see what we can do. All right, I'll be back. Dow's now only down 25, S&P's up 12. A little bit of buying coming in, good. I prefer buying the selling money. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's End, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so I, I, had a, I, I must do this. First of all, the IWM, the weekly chart, it's a three, three weeks late going to the left side right if I do a measured move. What happens in that case very often is that it goes underneath IWM, let's see, IWM. It goes underneath and then comes back and retests. So this 163 level, my suspicion is that we're going to go to maybe one, 161, 159 and then have a pretty decent bounce to try to get back in. That's with this particular pattern where I've got left side, right side price time match to the high of the, the week of the 9th of February at 199.26. So uh, a question came in, actually it was yesterday and I completely forgot about it, reminded me again today. Um, what is this with the peak one, peak two, or peak three even, or peak four? What, what does it mean? So over the years, what I found, especially when you're dealing with the futures, but it could be anywhere, uh, is that sometimes, you know, in the Chapman Wave, you, you expect that if you go to a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode, meaning the technicals are strong enough and now should go not just to a peak A, then a B, but it can even go to a C, and then your target becomes a D, the fourth highest peak. If it fails, it could fail sometimes by a penny, but all the technicals were strong enough to say, wow, it only failed because it failed, because everything else said it should have hit that number. I call that a peak C1, C2, and when I say I'm trading or something like that, I will get out of some of the position right there because I'm anticipating that maybe it's not going to go to a D. I don't want to be sitting at a C saying, oh, it's got to go to a D and watch it go all the way down. I am prepared for that. Not only that, look at this. This is the 200 period exponential moving average. Look how important that is. It's been resistance all the way. Look, peak A, peak B, C, D, E, F right there. Then peak A, B, C, C1, C2, C3. Same sort of thing. Then the peak A, B, C, D, E, F over the 200 period moving average. And then left side, right side, beautiful price time match goes to that and again takes it out from the 200 period moving average. Then it goes even lower to the 41, uh, 59 ish area, rallies, and there's your peak A, peak B, peak C. This is the E mini I'm talking about, one minute chart. Goes to peak C, then a quarter cent low, and then it retests that previous high, and then it starts to fail at the 200 period moving average. So, what is it? Peak C1, C2 is a phantom or a fake peak D. And I'm not embarrassed to call it a fake peak deep because I just want to learn how to get these things right every time I can. 
and as much as possible to be trading the right side. And that makes me really, um, look, when you get this turn down in the tacticals right there, that says, oh, oh that's probably a C1, C2, and it's not going back there, but it didn't. Okay, so with that said, I've done that. Next thing I want you to do is over here. So there are a couple of questions that I needed to get to. So UVXY. So the other day I said, you know, I, I just be a little, I don't know what to do to give you parameters for the UVXY in terms of stops or anything like that. And look what happened. It just screamed. It was somewhere over there, and it just rallied, and I was wrong. Um, I, I wasn't wrong in not giving you parameters when I wasn't sure, but I was wrong in saying that I I, I didn't know if it was going to go up or down. I didn't know. So now we have to add a peak D in the volatility. This is UVXY. This is the ProShares Ultra, uh, Ultra VIX short-term trading vehicle. This goes up with the VIX and down with the VIX. And the VIX is the volatility index. It's a measure of, of uh, nervousness. And once again, I'm going to say to you, I'm anticipating that the VIX index is going to go higher. So when the question came in, it was, I'm looking at this as some kind of a um, some kind of insurance policy. That's completely different. So I'm trying to think. I wish I don't know if Coda or Peaky is here. They had a, a stock that they used to own uh, back when the market was volatile a couple of years ago, and volatile meaning going down. Um, and I can't remember what the name of it was. It was like this. Uh, I, it, what was the name? It was kind of a. Um, it was like a bear, a bearish instrument. Uh, but it was more for the longer term. You know, some of these bearish instruments they get re, re uh, um, calculated every day. So a bullish uh, the, if they're two or three times long. This is different. So I can't remember if anybody if you if you're there, maybe you'll send me a note about it. So all I'm saying is that I think it is going higher. And as I said, I think that the volatility index, when all is said and done over the next, it could even be next week if this if this rally just doesn't go anywhere. We could be, I've got a time and price. I've got a lot of things going on that I'm looking at. I don't like to talk about them because, uh, first of all, it's irrelevant in terms of your positions, your market positions, if you're not actually trading those things. And the trading things that we have, like the short SMHs, the short uh, Dow, um, that's doing what we wanted. So I don't, I don't want to go out on a limb right now by talking about uh, something that. It's kind of ephemeral. So I'm just going to say for the VIX index, and in this case, you're talking about the UVXY, I would have a little bit in there. I wouldn't get too carried. It's really more an insurance policy. You can still see this going from 18 right now. It could go down to 15, and then out of the blue, it could be at 22. And that's the reason why you have it. So I would, I would nibble right here, even though I don't know if today is exactly the day. But I would scale in on increments of, one and a half points down. A little bit, little bit, little bit, and then that's it. You're done. And if you don't get it, I mean, it doesn't have a time limit. That's the best thing about it. So I, that's what I'm saying. But I wouldn't get carried away. It's just, as I say, part of an insurance policy. This question I had was, um, you had mentioned for all, all this week and even last week, you were talking about the, uh, what was it, natural gas. Natural gas. Is there something in the natural gas that you like at this particular point? And what exactly, um, what, what, what do you need to see for it to actually start to uh, become an implement of uh, another energy source that's, that's in demand, all right? So right now, natural gas is trading at 3.564, up 0.87. Had a really couple of good four, four day session to the upside. More importantly, I'm going to go to the UNG which is the instrument that for my subscribers that we, we'd be looking at. So the UNG, which is the United States National Gas Fund, trading right now at 741. This is a very strong leg A, gray leg A. I, I should change this. It really does look gray. Gray leg A only because you made a peak D at 795. Oh, let me open this up so you can see what I'm talking about. See this beautiful cup formation? You see the way I've got the Chapman inside wedge target? repellent line, how it went right to the line. It went right to my plumb line that I used. Not, it wasn't the low. I used a particular candle and made that the low. And it went there, 795, 808, I think was the high. 808 was the high of 
the, of the 9th of August. That was our target. He missed the target. It went to a peak D, and I don't like when a peak D is made underneath the previous high. It means you just, I like to see a peak C go push right through that previous high and then go to a D. And that's something like a Chapman wave cup and ladle formation. This is more like a cup, and it's not even like a cup and handle. This is like a pair of reading glasses, half lens, and you've got this cup formation here and another cup formation there. One on the left has done that a lot. But what I like is that the nine period moving average is very close to turning up, number one. Number two, the MACD is very close to turning up. The stochastic is rallying, but it's not that strong, but it is rallying plenty of clear, and the on balance volume is up in the week, in the daily chart, but that leads you to the weekly chart. I'll be back in a moment. We're actually talking about natural gas, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Guess this, Chapman. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is down. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So we're looking at uh, the UNG, which is at 7.42 right now, up 12 cents. And the reason why I kind of liked it and uh, what I was talking about over the last week is that I wanted to see the slow progression and then finally to see the nine period exponential moving average. Let me just go to my chart right here because it's a little difficult to see there. So we're looking at um, we're looking at UNG. Is that what I said? Yeah, UNG. And we're looking at a weekly chart. Oh, looking, yes. The weekly chart meant long, short, long. And when it does a very quick uh, one bar, in this case, a weekly bar reversal like that, you've got to be prepared that either... You're looking at choppiness coming in.
because it's giving you a hint that you're going sideways. You can just chop, 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 chop. Or you've got you've got rid of the selling pressure, and so quickly it went. This is a weekly chart. It went back to the buying pressure. So all I'm saying is that as I look at this, we've been waiting and waiting. I've been talking about U and G forever. I, I see here in my my notes here that we had a U and G. I think very briefly uh, a year ago. A year ago, as something that we were trying to get, I can't remember. I, I got a feeling that we had a little bit of a gain, and then it pulled back, and then we were out. So in this particular instance, I like what I'm seeing in the daily, and that leads me to the weekly. And the weekly is still in the rectangle formation, but for the first time, I'm beginning to see a positive divergence. That's all I'm saying. If we can finally get to 768, maybe early next week, 808 will be the left side high that I would like to see. Let's go to our, we've got a ping, 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 and the ping, ping, ping says, we have, we have, you have Larry on the line. Hi, Larry, how are you? Hey, Basil, how are you doing? Listen, I was listening to your show, and I, uh, I'm i uh, watching you in the market, and I think there's a bottom in here, and I was listening to your comments here. The only thing that I was going to ask you is uh, it doesn't seem to me like there's much fear in the market. I mean, it's going down very moderately. I mean, there's no one uh, scared or anything like that. Do you see anything out there that would really shake it up really badly, you know, like maybe down two or 300 points in the Dow today? And the Dow, somewhat, Dow and Russell are just getting creamed, and yet S&P and NASDAQ are holding up well. So this is, you brought up some really interesting points. I've been talking about them uh, over the week, and what I've been saying is that the Dow – finally had some really good earnings reports in the really horrible laggards. Uh, you're talking about uh, Triple M, uh, the RTX. Uh, yeah, they were just actually in the Dow. They wouldn't be RT, but it would be Microsoft, which was had a really good rally. There are a whole bunch of stocks in the Dow. IBM just had it. So I'm beginning to see something in the Dow that says to me there's a rotation and now what you're seeing is that some of the stocks that were some of the best are taking a breather. You saw that mm -hmm. in the uh, in the um, in the Nasdaq because some of the stocks that were really fantastic have been clobbered over the last week. So mm -hmm. as I see it, and we've been talking about this for some time, is that I don't see the crash scenario. What I see is just a very determined drive your nuts lower highs and lower lows. <laughs> Uh, you know, yeah. it, it, that, they, there are three markets as far as I'm concerned. There's time, there's price, or there's time and price. We haven't got time and price yet. We've got more time. And basically, mm -hmm. I mean, we've taken all this time. Uh, but when you think about it, the semiconductor has made an all-time high uh, fairly recently. We were fortunate to short uh, uh, two points off the all-time high and still sh uh, stay, remain in that position. But... Most of the other indices have not. The Dow has gone back to its January high. The S&P hasn't gone back to the January high. So this is like a huge consolidation, and it's a reconfiguration as I see it. So I'm not looking at this crash scenario. I just I, I don't see it. I see it as whittling away, improving in some areas, and not improving in other areas. So I, I'm the way I'm looking at it time-wise, next – Next week will be the test because if today, like the Dow's down 116, but you've got the S&P up five. If the, the Dow closed today really ugly and the S&P joined it, then we could get some kind of a low with the volatility. The VIX index has to get into the high 20s as far as I'm concerned before we make a really decent low. So I kind of I agree with you, but in a, it, it's a real mixed market and it's rotating through the different areas, repairing some and taking down some that have had really good gains. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Really, that's why I was checking in. I can't do the show today because my son-in-law is speaking at the University Medical Center. Here, he's a specialist in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and I think he wants to use me as a kidney pig. <laughs> you know, Larry, anyway, I, I have uh, to we're tell excited you, to listen to him speak. It's very uh, real honor oh, for him to do that. Really, he's a really smart I kid. Have so, anyway, I have listen, so many I'll friends. talk to you soon, and thanks again, and uh, t take care. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, you great soon. information, too, uh, Basil. You're a champion. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank See you. you Thank you. you <laughs> so, uh, so, folks, uh, you know, Larry just spoke about Parkinson's. I can't tell you how many people I know that have Parkinson's, and they're not all old. They're in the middle age. They could be older. Um, it's, it's just pervasive. And cancer, we have out of our closest 10 friends, 
uh, I think seven have some form of cancer. I, I mean, I don't know what it is. Anyway, let's get back to our story that we're looking at here. So I was talking about the UNG. So just to finish up, this rectangle can last a lot longer than your patients. That's number one. And number two, I am seeing improvement. But you're talking about an instrument that has been hammered from 35 and the continuous contract down to the fives. Uh, something's wrong. I mean, something is absolutely wrong. But I'm looking at it and saying, there's a chance that at this particular time, I think this is a rally that might have legs, but you won't know it until it really starts to trade in the eights. And right now it's at 743. So I hope I'll answer that question about the uh, UNG. Maybe I took a little bit too much time. Uh, next thing I want you to look at is, let me just go to this here. So IBRX, the question came in. I think we were looking at it yesterday. Have I done the IBR, IBRX? IBRX, oh, look at that. Wow. So um, it's gone to a leg C. It's trading at 232, up 28 cents, up 13%. That's, that's not a big deal. What is a big deal, it is 273. That's 40 cents high. That's another. So that must have been 33%. Whatever it is, it was a fantastic gain. Give it a little bit back. And there's your leg C. So in the Dan Dan, yes, it's doing. Remember, I spoke about the Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle. I said right here, if it can last for most of the, the next 35 minutes, I said during my show, and above 198, I think I said, there's a really good chance that either today or tomorrow, that was yesterday or today, it would test and maybe even break the high of the left side, which is 222. And remember, I said I had a mailbox. PR box T22. Anyway, and here it is. Very nice action, but it is a biotech, and biotechs can give back just as quickly as they give. So I hope you, I'm sure you did. Uh, I'm sure you took some profits on the way up there. Fabulous action. Okay. Next question is um, we, uh, yeah, let, let me just go through this again because um, I, think, I think it's really important. I've made notes here on what, look, when you got WM. This is a stock that I've spoken about for decades, and I keep saying I want subscribers to have it, I want subscribers to have it, and we never get it because it does. It has these quick moves, and you don't know what to do, and then it pulls back, and a quick move. And I, This is waste management, trading up 29 sets at 163.11. It's in a peak C in the daily chart. The weekly chart had a very good spike, and my question is, why would waste management, which is so sensitive to the economy, be up here. Why would Syntas, this is uniforms, overalls, uh, rentals, be so close to an all-time high? That's what I mean when I see it today. It's a bifurcated market. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I thought I'd take a look at this technical Friday. This is where we do some of the stuff that I, I do uh, throughout the uh, throughout every single day, just notating charts, trading them, just notating sometimes. So this is the 10-minute chart. Let's go to this low at 1 o'clock this morning. Uh, was it yesterday? 1 o'clock yesterday. They went to 4 o'clock. Yeah. And then you had this big spike, and then you pull back, and then you just held steady. But look what happened. The nine cross positive, you went to, you remember the chapter where you try to identify the lowest low bar, then really count each successively higher peak. If you can get a bicycle that can go to a, uh, upgrade it to a buy mode, um, it should go to at least four peaks higher. That's peak A, peak B is a higher, peak C is the highest. You remember floating letter becomes a peak, then D is the fourth highest peak. You can go higher, but D is your objective. So you go to peak A and then you pull back. Hold steady. Technicals have started firming up, and then it goes peak A, B, C, D. This is the 10-minute E-mini chart. Actually, this is the 10-minute uh, um, continuous contract, which is at exactly the same price. I, for some reason, I've never seen this before. I had a problem uh, at 8.30 this morning with the uh, my E-mini December one, so I just jumped to this right away. So I redid the notation. So here it goes. Starts a brand new peak A, B, C, D, pulls back. Nine is holding beautifully. Look at this. If you were in over there, you're still in. It goes to peak A, B, and then it goes to peak C1. That was a C. But there we made it a C2 because it was exactly the same high. And then it even went to a C3 at exactly the same high. Now, I found over the years that if it goes to a C2 and a C3 and even a C4, be prepared that you could have a sudden push to the upside and that could still go to the D. Well, it did that. Look, it didn't take out the left side low, so this is still an active peak C. Then it goes to a D. Doji candle. I love doji candles at highs or lows. Watching it closely, and then it breaks down. It goes to pink. And it comes down. It goes to peak A, B minus in the arch formation. I drew this in a long time ago, and my target was, if it was going to pull back, I, you never know. You're just going to do your homework, and then you see what happens. 41.66.25 by noon. Today, noon, and what do we got? We're at quarter to 11. We've still got a lot of hours to go. A lot of hours. A lot of 10 minute charts to go. So, and we're at uh, 10 51 right now, 50. Right? So that's what I did. And how did I do it? It's a beautiful arch formation. Look at that. That's like the bull formation. Remember, I always talk about back in 2000, I think it was the XAU, the gold, um, gold and silver, uh, Philadelphia gold and silver index. Um, had at, I think it was 44 or 45, it made this, um, the gold had made this unbelievable upside down, a bowl formation, like a, like a deep dish pit pizza, which I don't particularly like, I like the thin crust. And, and then what happened is it broke out of a multi-year base, and it just went one to one to the upside from that sideways move. So this is what I'm looking at for the, for the potential to the downside. If this breaks and it starts to trade, any time after, I'd say, 1 to 130, it doesn't have to. I'm just saying, because right here, it went right to the channel wave inside wedge, pink dash target support line. So these are techniques that I use all the time. And I, I so I'm also going to say, send me a note. I keep getting asked about doing a, another one of those all-day webinars where I talk about all these patterns as they're going along. We have no idea what's going to happen, but we follow them and we have our, we have our, 
a dictionary of all these different techniques. And as they unfold, we use them. So, you know, if you're interested in that, I'll have to consider it at some point. It's just something I love doing, but it takes quite a bit of work to be able to do that. That would be an all day. Talking about all these different patterns. So this is the inside wedge. Held the support. Let's see what happens here. And what I'm saying is the nine is still weak in the 10-minute chart. But look, we've got the on-balance volume ready for a bit of a bounce. That's the only tech, technical tool that I use as oversold or overbought. Right here, it gave you the exact high. Look at this. Right there. No, I'm sorry, it wasn't the exact height. It was one bar early. It was one bar late. Sorry. But it, it can give you the exact turnaround. It, that's what, one of the things that gave us that exact high um, August the 1st on the Dow. So, okay. I thought I wanted to do some of these things just to show you. It's T Technical Friday. Now we want to run through as many stocks as we can. If I can ever get this a little mouse. Okay, there you are. Yeah, there we go. So what we're looking at here is, I said I would do all these, uh, the, the, the big sevens. Here we go, Amazon. No, let's go to Apple. Apple, Apple is trading down. It's got the beautiful arch formation. I I thought I had notated this. I should have. Look, here's the plumb line. What's the plumb line? It's where you think you're going to go in an arch formation and take exactly the same number of bars on the left to get to that same level on the, on the, on the low on the right. So what do we do? There's your plumb line. Here's your bar. This is the easy one. What's difficult is the technique that I've developed where you've got to use a moving plumb line. Where do you find that? Those are the techniques you want to learn. This is easy. I mean, visually, look at this. It didn't miss it. It got it by the exact day. Number of bars up, number of bars down in an arch formation. This goes green, green, because you always want to show what's going up as green. There it is. And where's the channel wave inside? Uh, wedge target uh, support line. Yeah, this one would have been difficult. I would have had to fake it. I would have had to, there wasn't a new high over there. So I would have said if I take it from there, that would be right. But I like to take it from a peak when you're coming down and from a trough when you're going up. But look what's happened. Apple has gone arch formation, dreaded H. What's the dreaded H? Dreaded H is when it comes down a straight line, tries to Straight line, I don't want to give you my newsletter. Come down a straight line, tries to bounce, fails at a peak A or a B, and then takes out the left side low. That's a dreaded edge because it can go one to one to the downside. Well, there's your A minus because it failed. Here's your A minus because it failed. And that's just saying Apple is not very strong right now. It is trying to find a base. Okay, that's Apple. So where would I find a base? I'd say the 163 to 161 area is going to be really important if we don't make some kind of a tradable low in the next uh, few days, which my my time sequence is telling me is a possibility. But I'm not going to go there until I have more evidence. And I have to wait for Friday's close if I'm looking at weekly charts. And there is your inside track propellant zone right there. So will Apple use that to rally? We don't know. But it's not looking very good right now. All the technicals are already quite poor. Now let's go to Amazon. Amazon right here, fabulous move up. Oh, and it's increased. Now that's really what you want to see. So what do we have here? We have the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. You see these highs right here? Look at that. Beautiful. How, how could you even, I mean, how do these things happen? Just amazes us when we do technical analysis the symmetry and the things that happen over and over. So if it breaks above that next week and starts to close in the 132 to 131 area, that's going to be really positive for Amazon on a short-term basis. If it starts to stall, and that stall says, oops, um, right now there's a, a, a green Chapman Wave Roman candle. If at any point in the next, I mean, it's a weekly chart, so I'm going to say in the next two weeks, if there is an intraday move for, I'm going to make it a long time, for two hours below 122, it'll retest the low that was made. Uh, and that low was yesterday in 190. So that's Amazon. The right now is acting very well. Um, this is the, the savior for the market because the 9 period moving average hasn't crossed negative in the weekly chart. As we go out, I want to look at GE. Just it's not one of the seven, but it's a Pretty important stuff. Give that give back. Wow. I'll be back.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, just in this final segment, uh, GTS, thank you, I forgot. It's a GE is pulling back. Remember, I looked at this pattern in 10 minutes. I think it was a mini chart the other day. I said, this long rectangle should take out the low, and we're going to watch it closely because GE should be digesting gains. And this peak C could be a peak C1, C2, making this a, a deeper correction in GE. I'm watching this very closely. It's had a spectacular move. Uh, IYT, yes, IYT is the transportation index. And look at this, ugly. Look at that peak D and the Chapman wave right there. And look at that pullback under the 200 period moving edge. We've got to have the IYT, the transports, starting to find support. I need everything together. The old adage, uh, you know, where the transports go, the Dow goes. <clears throat> Those things don't apply anymore. But I do like the fact that when the transportation index is acting well and the general markets are acting well, then you've got this cohesive push to the upside. All right. Now, with that said, uh, one other question came in. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, I didn't finish. So um, uh, Netflix, NFLX. There we go. Netflix holding very nicely. Big gap up, holding the gap. A lot of these things that we just decimated on the way down and then had a really good rally. How they hold over the next week is going to be so important. Netflix, we get Apple, Netflix. Uh, oh, Meta. Meta is trading right now. Uh, it's got a, I had a chain wave Roman candle yesterday. Look at that beautiful Roman candle. And today, so now the rule of this is if it went into the wick, halfway into the wick for a shorter period, a shorter time frame, there's a root and hole held there. 
you've got to be careful because it can easily test the left side low. In this case, if it can close above the high of yesterday for two out of three sessions, it says you can go quite a bit higher and we're going to be watching that. So meta up seven right now. So with that said, I got through the uh, session, even though I was feeling a little fluish after taking the shot to stop the flu. <laughs> so what can I say? Have a wonderful rest of the weekend and uh, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And uh, thank you for staying with me.